So now that we've got all that out of the way, I want to go ahead and finally begin modeling something in Maya with polygons. So there's only one more thing you need to know before we get started, uh, but let's go ahead and create a cube. I'll zoom into it and turn off my grid, which I've got a hotkey for. Again, that's right here under show. You just hit that right there. Turns off the grid. Go into shaded mode. You click of that button. And uh, so one thing you may be wondering about is how do you get things to look smooth in Maya? Um, for example, let me just open up a model really quick. So here's something I modeled a while ago. Tinkerbell character. Let's get rid of that cube for a sec. So here's Tinkerbell, but as you can see, the way I've modeled her, she has a lot of facets on her body, on the dress and so forth, her eyes and her hair. It's all very boxy and, and polygon-like, right? Because we use polygons to make her, it's only natural. But ultimately, this isn't what we want to see. We want to see a final realized character. So I'm going to duplicate this hair and just pull it off real quick so we can see. Um, there is a shelf button on the power pack toolbar here that is right here. And if you select some geometry like this and you hit that button, it's going to smooth it for you. So what's happening here is it's actually just a preview. And if you select this again and hit this button again, it's going to turn it back to wireframe or to low polygon mesh. But what's actually happening is if you go to the mesh menu, select an object, we're going to go to mesh and smooth. So what's actually happening to achieve the same look is it's having to divide the mesh a couple times and average out the vertices. So that's essentially what's happening. And this is still not quite as smooth. So if you look at the top of the hair right here, you can see it's very smooth and rounded. But this is still kind of faceted. So I might actually have to smooth this again. And then I'd finally get to the result that I want. So this is really the only sane way to create uh, models in Maya. Um, if you could imagine having to model this in this uh, fashion by actually creating all these faces and edges and so forth, you'd be doing it forever because to do it this many times, to create this many faces and to get them all aligned and smooth and flowing in the right directions and so forth would be maddening. So that's why we work in this special uh, fashion. Just get rid of this. What we do is we model low res with the assumption that we're going to be going to a higher res model later on. And so uh, typically what will happen in feature films, uh, you know, movies like Rango or Toy Story or whatever, uh, the people will model the model's low res. And as they work, they'll toggle something like this to see how it looks. And then when it finally is ready to go, what they'll do is they'll hand this off to somebody else and they'll actually smooth it and then work on it from there. Uh, it doesn't quite work like that, but that's essentially what the gist of this is because uh, it's really impossible to work on anything uh, too high res and um, so this makes a lot of sense. So this is actually putting it into a state called sub D preview mode. So it actually changes it from a uh, polygon to a sub-D, which is sort of like a polygon. Uh, you could think of it as just a smooth polygon. It would be the same difference. Um, when it's in a state like this, you can still manipulate it. So you can grab a face if you want. You can pull it around. And you'll notice it's kind of kind of behave like a NURBS surface. And, uh, and you can also select vertices in much the same way, even edges and things like this. And you could even edit the surface and work with it. So uh, I guess it's a matter of preference. You could work in this mode or you could work in this mode. Typically I like to work in this mode because uh, there are certain things that um, will become more obvious later in the class. But let's say if we wanted to make this hair a little bit more uh, bulgy, you could just say, okay, well, I'll just pull this out. But that might be what you want. But looking at the model, 
this isn't so desirable to have a single vertice like that just poking out. But anyway, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, but just to show you that this is uh, available to you, and you'll see me use it on a hotkey. So I've got it set to a certain hotkey that I like. But you can either use that here, or you can set the hotkey yourself. So one thing I did want to talk about real quick, I'll just uh, put her on a layer and hide her for now. There's something called the magic rule of three. So if I just have a cube like this, right now it has evenly distributed points. So there's a point here and here and here, and they're all equal distance from each other. So if I smooth this, it's going to turn kind of into a sphere type shape. But you'll notice that if I grab one of these vertices and pull it over next to this other one, it's now going to look a little bit different and it's going to have that kind of pointed shape. Uh, let's see, this isn't quite as good of an example. Let's put some divisions in here so it becomes more obvious. Okay, so I could grab these edges and just pull them over here. And this one over here. And now when I smooth this, you'll see there's a, a much bigger difference here. So I've added more divisions, so it's become kind of a rounded cube. But in the area that I dragged these vertices together, it's becoming sharper. And this is essentially everything you need to know about modeling with polygons, almost. Um, if you work in this workflow, then this is where you want to be. Um, anytime you want to create a hard edge, you need to have at least two or more edges that are close together. And we could just keep going with this and bring it even closer. And it creates that nice sharp line. Now you see it's kind of rounding off here. That's just because this vertice isn't close enough. So then we get that kind of look. So what if I wanted to create a cube that had sharp edges all around? Well, what we do is uh, there's a couple ways you could do it. Um, first, we could build the cube with enough spans to do that. And if you take an edge here and double click it, it will automatically grow that selection all the way around. You could bring that up. And then this face we could scale out. Uh, actually, I don't think that's such a good idea. 